Uh, yeah, welcome everyone. My name is Mateusz Pusz and today we are going to talk about a project that I'm um, hosting, managing for, for some time. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not the only author, so I don't, I don't want to say this is my project uh, because this is not the true, not the case anymore. Uh, this is about physical news library for the next C++. Um, basically, we are trying to create something that will improve the safety of applications that we that, that, that we that we basically provide in our production in our companies and we believe this is a really important subject to cover um, especially for i think that's especially true for for life critical software for uh, autonomous driving for for aviation for space for space and everywhere where actually people's lives matter right Maybe it's not the case today because we are not allowed to sleep in Tesla while driving, but probably five years from now, it will be the case for every one of us. And we want to make sure that we can depend on the software that is working for us, right? Without any bugs and issues. So, and that, yeah, that's why I think that this library is needed. And that's why I also think, and this is also some understanding of some people at least here, that possibly it could be a part of the standards, maybe C++26, because this life critical products often cannot use any uh, external libraries rather than standard library in the compiler. So this is why I mentioned here next C++ because it might be a part of C++ in the future. If not, it still will be a nice library on GitHub or Conan VC package too, so uh, you can still use it. I will not talk much about motivation, existing practice challenges here because I already covered this a, few, a few time ago on CFPCon, so please go and and see that if you are interested in the subject. We are going to talk more about the use cases and other stuff today. So, um, we are going to talk about strong interfaces, about the performance, user experience, some introduction to the framework basics of my library, and basically compatibility environment that's needed to um, make it work. There is a lot of material to cover. So if there will be time, I will take questions at the end. So please note slides if you'd like to refer to some specific, um, maybe code sample. And also talking about the code samples, some of the code samples will be not meant for you to read at full, just to grasp a general idea. For example, how much code is needed or how many include files you have to import rather than reading every one of them by hand, because we have like 90 slides for 60 minutes, which is a lot. Uh, slides will be available after the presentation, so you'll be able to read them in detail if needed. Also, I, I provide the Godbolt links for nearly every code sample, so you can also play with it in Godbolt. So, let's start. First of all, what it is about. Uh, physical Inch Library is about managing the uh, quantities of some uh, physical dimensions with some units, right? We know this already because we have chrono in the standard. Chrono is only one of the quantity types, one dimension, time, right? So this is similar. This is something that we always did. 10 kilometers divided by two should give five kilometers. This is simple. But we also want to do unique conversions like in Chrono, but also for other dimensions. And we want to be able to convert between different dimensions easily, right? One, divide, one kilometer divided by second, it's 1000 meter per second, right? And so on. Also notice that dividing a scalar by a quantity gives a quantity of, of a different type, right? So you don't have to divide two different quantities. It's enough to make an inverse and you end up with a different quantity. And uh, in my library, actually I have more than one way to do it in terms of the construction of those quantities. We had a vote yesterday about which one is the most uh, basically favorite one for this audience. So uh, this one was not, this is, this is UDLs, this is what, what, what uh, Chromo does. Uh, this one was not also, this is boost-like syntax uh, with multiply and, sorry, uh, this is literacy, yeah, yeah. This one is not, this is boost-like syntax. And in order to make it work, you have to provide all those parentheses to basically not have mistakes. This one was the one that won yesterday. The third one, and I promise that all the rest of the slides in my talk today will be basing on this one. So I spent entire evening yesterday fixing my slides to reflect what you voted yesterday. 
So this is the version of so-called uh, aliases for units. And um, yeah, they work with uh, either the terse version or a longer version. Both of them are supported by the same solution. So if you want to be terse, you can be terse. If you want to be more detailed, if you want to say exactly what this M means, because in some contexts M may not have specific meaning, you can always provide that this is meter of quantity length, which depends on the context, right? So it's useful. So this is, these are the results from yesterday. So as you can see, there was strong preference to use this approach. Talking about, about the project, we, I think that we have pretty nice documentation. You can judge it by yourself going to, to this link. Uh, so there's quite a lot of chapters, quite a lot of things there. I spent quite a lot of time making it right and detailed. Uh, you can also try it on Compiler Explorer. Uh, we have several releases there. 070 is the latest release, but we also have trunk version. And two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I added this also to Gitpod. There is a big button on GitHub, static open in Gitpod. If you click it, in a few seconds, you will end up in an environment ready to, to work with all of the dependencies being installed, with all of the uh, um, targets being pre-compiled for uh, GCC 10, GCC 11, Clank 13, and all the documentation built. So if you just want to build it in the Visual Studio code, you will just get the information that nothing has to be done because already everything is pre-built. So if you do any changes, only your changes will be built and it will be pretty fast for you to contribute possibly to my project. Our project, sorry. Uh, also, we are in Conan. Uh, we have the latest official version on official server 070. So you can use it with, with Conan. And you have also used the specific uh, language version 20 for this one to not have any problems. We just discussed this problem and on a previous lecture. And also you can use the latest version from the head. For this, you have to add the remote on, on my JFrog Artifactory where I host the latest builds all the time. Requirements for the project. We want to be compile time safe wherever possible, right? We have to provide the best user experience uh, in terms of compiler errors and debugging. And this is really important here because basically the main purpose of this library to exist is to generate errors every day for every engineer. If you, if basically, if people will not make any problems and errors and mistakes in their code, this library is useless, right? Because if you know how to divide units, how to divide uh, quantities, you don't need any compile time checks. But it is hard and we make a lot of mistakes. That's why this library is really important. And that's why we need to make those compiler errors easy to work with for people that are also not experts in C++ template metaprogramming. Because in most cases, this is used by engineers that even don't know exactly how to code in C++. It should be as fast as double, because if double will be faster, people will not use this library. It should be easy to extend, because you are working in many different fields. Um, maybe on my library, I can provide some specific support for your specific domain, but in the standard, standard for sure, we'll not be able to cover all of the grounds. We'll cover only the, the most important ones, like SI system, but we'll not cover maybe, I don't know, natural, natural Linux or other different uh, points of, of uh, quantum, quantum physics, for example, right? There cannot be macros in the interface. Uh, basically, for library on GitHub, probably it doesn't matter, but committee will never agree to have macros in the interface. <laughs> so if I'm dreaming about the standardization of this in the future, I cannot use macros. And there should be no external dependencies, rather other than the standard ones, right? Also, it should be possible to be standardized as a freestanding part of the standard library, so it can be used in embedded domain, for example, without any, any issues, right? So, for example, no exceptions, no dynamic allocations, and so on. Okay, so let's talk about the interfaces. This is my toy example that I would like to use today for our lecture. I have some average speed function that takes some length, some time, divided, return speed, right? And then I want to pass kilometers, hours, get speed in kilometers per hour, print it as kilometers per hour, because this is what user wor is working on. 
right? And the same for miles because we have we may want to have uh, support for different allocations. What is important is compile time safety, support for multiple units and unit prefixes, and there should be no runtime overhead comparing to double. Of course, you can do everything on doubles, right? Actually, this is true for many projects I've seen in production. This is quite fast. This is efficient, of course, right? Um, what's the problem here basically is that even in, uh, in this case of double, what you are doing in here, you are um, converting every time to meters and back, right? Kilometer to meter, hours to seconds, results in meters per second, then my meters per second to, to kilometer per hour. This is slow in case of additional operations that you don't need in this case. This is also how many existing libraries work right now today. They work on the coherent, so-called coherent units of the, of the system. But it works, right? Assuming that there are no floating point problems here. If you want to use boost units, first of all, you have to include a bunch of headers. And it's not trivial which, have the, which headers actually to, to include. So, so I found it uh, pretty frustrating that something doesn't link, doesn't compile, even though it looks like a correct code, and they have to figure out which header is missing. But, but the function is de declared really nicely with nice interface, and that's what it basically should do. However, if you would like to provide things like kilometer, hour, uh, even though boost units is a great library with a lot of units and quantities, it turns out that it doesn't cover those um, by, by itself. Because it also only covers the ones that are um, basically the uh, coherent units of specific systems and prefix ones. <coughs> so I have to define this by myself. And also, there are no implicit conversions in boost units, even in the correct co in, in the correct uh, di direction. So if you are having the experience with with with, with Chrono you know that you can always convert hours to seconds because this is always a non-truncating non conversion. Vice versa, of course, is bad, right? Because seconds to hours is a truncating operation, but in one direction, it's safe. And this is what we are used to. This is something that we expect to do in this case. But in case of boost units, there are no implicit conversions at all. You can you have to always implicit, explicitly cast to every new unit, and which is quite verbose and surprising sometimes because error logs are not that easy to understand that actually it's about the conversion problem. Moreover, uh, if you provide this example, provide the, um, the 220 kilometers to hours, miles, hours, this is the result that will be printed. Probably it's not the best result that we can expect, but still it works, in, at least in the unit that we, that we wanted. I would also like to uh, compare with other library that's a really popular one, and Nick, by, written by Nick Holthouse. You can find it on GitHub. It's quite terse. It has only one header, so it's nice to, to include. Uh, it has really short types. So actually, entire implementation fits on one slide with the use case. It uses UDLs, but prints only the uh, coherent units of the system rather than the ones provided by the user or the one that was returned from this as a type. The library that we wrote um, basically has the same support. We are still in the uh, coherent units um, domain. So we are still conver converting from kilometers to meters and then from meter, kilometer, meters per second to kilometers per hour. But this is the use case, this use case covered by the library I'm talking about with the exactly with the uh, naming conversions that we chose yesterday. And it prints what's expected. But we don't want to pay for this conversion if we don't need it, right? If a user provides us kilometer per hour 
and this is the only unit it use, the user is using in entire application. Why we do have to convert to meters, to seconds and back, even though user never actually talks to us in meters and seconds. The user doesn't care. There's a performance hit here, right? Also possible problem with, um, with float, floating point precision. If you are dividing, multiplying uh, values all the time, just to get the same unit again, or derived unit of this unit, right? So if user provides us kilometers per hour, we should return this in kilometer per hour right away and just divide the values and don't play with the ratios of units at all. So we are we need to have some, some generic code here. Of course, we can do everything with double, right? It's as fast as it gets. You just divide them and you have a correct result, right? But it's not a type safe. So if you want to make it in boost, it's even harder because you have to I partially specialize a template, uh, sorry, not partially, so the template with, 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 uh, with this signature. And there's a problem, what should be a return type? You can, of course, return auto, but if you want to be more verbose, what it actually re returns, there is no easy helper for that. And notice that here I had to divide the length by time. So basically I have to repeat the logic of the library. So I have to know that speed is, is a division of those two. Notice that I will start talking about some energy or something more complicated, then this return type will be huge and possible to make mistakes. Uh, with Nick library, with Nick's library, um, it's even harder because we cannot provide those, those templates here because some reasons I, I spoke about this on my previous talks. So I have to basically use enable if with some type traits to make sure that those arguments are of a correct way. And I didn't find any way to say this is speed as a return. So I just check with static assert if it's actually velocity. Uh, actually, we can improve this, this solution here with those libraries using concepts, C++ 20 concepts. We can define quantity of, we can define length as quantity of length dimension, time, velocity, and specify this way, and it starts to work correctly. So concepts, even for those legacy libraries, make a huge difference to, for, for the interfaces. The same for the other library. And we are ending up exactly with the same signature. In the library I provided, actually this is the default, so I don't have to ma make any uh, yeah, any helpers. This is the default case, and this is actually the suggested use case for generic code. If you want to have generic code, this is what you should write. This is a template, even though it doesn't look like a template, but it is, because you have auto here as function arguments, right? And it takes time, length, return, speed. It's clear to the user what it does, and it is easy to use. So if you provide kilometers per hour, you get speed. Also here, you can, if, and you can print it. Another one with miles and hour. And this is the result. And this is not only about, generosity here is not only about having different units for specific quantities of length, it's also about having different representation types. If I pass here linear algebra proposal as, as units, as values, the same, it will work. I will get the result as a vector, right? Because division works for velocities. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about performance. Um, dividing coherent units of double requires us to do some multiplications and divisions. We have three multiplications, two divisions. And this is the code you've seen already, so it's just grayed out, so you don't spend time on looking into it. For boost units, three multiplication, one division. For Nicole's house, I've seen three multiplication, two divisions. For my library, three multiplication, one division. So it turns out that actually strong type library can be faster than, than double, because double had two divisions. It may be caused by the fact that maybe there is some potential for aliasing, 
because the compiler doesn't know that those are, those are different types and, and, and those it doesn't know that those are not the same values or different values, right? But it's, it turns out that strong typing can be faster than using uh, fundamental types. But I, we are interested in this code. We don't want to pay for any other, other overhead, right? We are just dividing doubles, quantities, in boost units, Nick Holthouse, and mine. So there's no runtime overhead over working on fundamental, fundamental types. User experience. Doing physical units is hard. Maybe not, not in this case, it's a trivial bug, but consider having a function of 100 lines with many temporary calculations and then some result. It may not be speed anymore. Right? This is what you will see in boost units. Notice three dots at the end because this is not the end. We are continuing. This was the first line. This is the second line of the log because this was just in function. Now you're having the error, actual error, and it continues. And yeah, and from on the dots here. Do you know what was the issue? With other library, it's much shorter because we have static asserts stating that units are not compatible. So it's better, right? But on the other hand, do you know what a unit is here? to compare why they are not compatible. Stood ratio 1, stood ratio 0, 1, stood ratio 1, stood ratio 0, 1, and it follows. What is the problem? What are the units here? As you can see, static asset sometimes is not that helpful. It's just shorter. And with, with my library, you actually have this is entire error lock. And you have information that in function, you could not convert from to. And actually, you have all the information regarding the uh, quantities that are provided. Right? Notice that in this case, we are stating that we have uh, here length, time as an, as an input. And basically, we are having here unknown dimension of exponent of dim length 1 and exponent time one. So basically it means that those are multiplied rather than divided. If it was divided, it would be minus one and it would actually be converted to speed. So it's easier to understand what happens. Those basically, the fact that we are having seen here name time unknown dimension is, the fact, is, is caused by the fact that I'm using structure, the strong types in my code rather than template aliases. If you're doing template alias for the same, it will just decay during the programming, during the, com the compilation stage. Compiler, do not play with aliases. Aliases are only for humans to write code, right? And that's why those errors are so, so huge here. Because this is an alias that's user-friendly. This is an alias, right? But then, when it's extended by the compiler, it looks like this one. That's why strong typing is really important. And that's why it's a pity that we don't have strong type aliases in our uh, language. Okay, so let's maybe look into, into another kind of, of problem. We have dimension mismatch here. We are basically dividing meters by seconds, and we want to assign this to acceleration. This is short error this, this time. But you have information that, that conversion from dots, 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 dots to non-scalar dots, 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 dots requested. And really, again, we don't know what, what happened. because everything is hidden behind dots. You just see the difference here, but basically you don't know what you're working with. In the other library, it's quite similar, maybe a bit longer, a, a long list of ratios again, and static assert units are not compatible. In the library that, that, that we are writing, we have so-called downcasting facility. We were also voting on this one yesterday. Actually, this one, this vote actually was funny yesterday. 
Uh, but people basically like this feature. And we, we basically voted that it should stay there. Uh, if you're interested, the, 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 it will be in the uh, other talk that I provided yesterday, so it should be also visited, uh, provided on YouTube some, in some time probably from now. So this is the, the result. Conversion from dimension speed, meter per second, to non-scalar type, dimension acceleration, meter per second. All of the information is provided. And the fact that dividing length by time gives us nicely named speed with meter per second type is the benefit of this stochastic facility because typically you will not be able to find a user provided type from the base class, right? Because this actually is exponent one, exponent minus one, some metaprogramming monster. But we are able to find out that user provided a type that exactly uh, somehow uh, renames this monster to those nicely named types by the user. And this is what the Doncasti facility is about, to provide nice to work with error messages and debugging experience. So talking about the debugging experience, both units are going to the debugger and this is a breakpoint. As you're working with generic code, you'd like to know what is the type you're working with. Right? But the library, again, a bunch of ratios. When you break in our library, again, you have information, the one that you expect. Dim length in kilometer, dim time in hour. I think that's really important for physical units library and maybe other libraries, but physical units library is probably one of the most important here to provide good user experience for the users. Because as I said, the main purpose of this existence is actually to produce those errors. And an engineer will be faced to those errors many times a day. So it should be easy to analyze. So, what are the framework basics here? Let's talk about strong interfaces. How do you like this code? I see people laughing, or people on YouTube. There is some laugh here. Yeah, we don't like this interface, right? This is C-like. We can provide every, everything there. We are doing better. We are C++ programmers. We are having strong types, right? So we write this one. Or this one, which actually in C++ 20 looks like that. Or maybe this one. How we are better? Is it really so bad, so much nicer? Of course, this one will fail at runtime. This one will fail at compile time with huge error lock, right? But consider cppreference.com or Doxygen or any other documentation provided for the user where you provide such an interface and say, please comply to the requirements provided by the interface. How come can you provide anything and know how to use this, what to provide, what to expect as a return type, if we type like this one in our code? I claim that unconstrained template parameters are the void star of C++. And this is something that we should change with C++20. I know that it's hard. I know that there's a lot of to learn. To learn. Please open the concepts, iterators, and ranges library in cpdefense.com. You, you will find a lot of concepts there, but we have to start practice. And practice, and practice, and with this we'll learn how to use it. We just have to use it, get used to it, and know what's there in, on, in order to not reinvent the wheel. So we have concepts in our library. This is the, basically the tree of concepts we have. We have unit, dimension, quantity, quantity point, quantity kind, and quantity point kind right now, and some other concepts, of course, but those are the most important ones. Unit is a basic building block of the library. Everything depends on unit. Every unit can be scaled against its reference unit, right? As, for example, you can have kilometers as a scaled version of meter, right? And every dimension has a coherent unit assigned. So we know that length in SI system is measured in meters. 
length in CGS system is measured in centimeters, and so on. And this is how we define it. Struct meter, thanks to C++20, you can provide an identifier right away in the definition. And the prefix, which basically means that this is SI prefix uh, supported for this, for this unit. So then you can sp specify kilometer as the prefixed one. This is CRTP design pattern, that's why it's repeated. Uh, I hope it will be possible to get rid of it with the new um, inclusion to the language called, uh, I don't remember what's official name, but the, there was a talk, my little this deduction. Uh, so we will be able to pass this and, and to the functions and basically maybe CRTP will be not needed in this case. Do you remember what was the proposal officially? But we voted this in, in on last on last meeting. Deducing this, yeah, this is the officially official name of the paper, right? Yeah. So you can define also second, minute, hour, with a scaled units. Those are prefix because those are using prefixes. Minute doesn't use a prefix; it just uses ratio sixty of second. And hour is sixty minutes. So these are units. Also, there can be derived units for meter per second, kilometer per hour. What's nice is that we can say that there's a deduced unit and you just provide that this is deduced for speed. So we know what speed uh, equation, dimensional equation is and say we provide kilometer for length and hour for time. And basically the framework will divide those for us with correct ratios and provide the unit. So we don't have to divide unit again if you already specified that speed is a division of those two uh, dimensions. So it's safer and the ratios are always correct. So talking about dimensions. Dimension concept matches either the dimension of a so-called base or direct quantity. We have seven base quantities in SI system and all the rest are derived from those. Base dimension is associated with a unique symbol identifier like length, time, those are official symbols provided by SI. And base unit for the specific system because each system has different units for base, base units, or base dimensions. Derived dimension is a list of exponents of base or derived dimensions. So for example, speed is provided in meter per second and this is exponent one of time, of length, sorry, and exponent minus one of time. And finally, we are coming to quantity. There's a concrete amount of unit of a, for a specified dimension with a specific representation. So a length is a quantity of length with some unit and some representation. So you can specify length in kilometer with representation int value three, right? Also with the um, constructor helpers that we voted yesterday, this is how you implement them. And this is what you can type in the library. SI length kilometer D3, which is quite more terse and nice. Okay, so those are the quantities. We are here. But what about the rest? Probably you wonder. Quantity kite. Quantity is a more specific usage of a quantity. For example, imagine that you are implementing a packaging system for some, I don't know, um, uh, shipping company or whatever. They want to provide all of the dimensions of the package with height and, and length of the package, right? And there's always like arrow pointing up this way, right? So you don't want to put the package on the wrong side. That's why you should, for example, be able to discriminate that something is a horizontal plane and something is a vertical plane and make them separate, even though they are still lengths, right? So those are kinds of length. Those are separate concerns and should not be possible to mix with each other. For example, you may have a vertical kind and horizontal kind. This is how you define those. And you can say, for example, this is dist distance and height. Imagine flying a plane that will mix those during calculations. Would it bother you? <laughs> yeah, this depends how short you're going, yeah. Yeah, and, and with this you can, find, for example, also have safety, like structures saying that this is height, minimum, um, basically altitude um, above ground level for 
below, for example, clouds or, or distance separation from, from, the, from, the, from, from, from the ground, right? Because this is vertical plane. Quantity point, probably you know what it is about. It's like time point in chrono. And actually, we, can, we, we are working with chrono really nicely. So you can define a time timestamp and then initialize it this way. And quantity point kind basically is a quantity point for specific kind. Like we can define the vertical point kind, specify this, this is altitude in international foot, for example, and then specify that we have some flight point in our vector of points where you have a timestamp, altitude, and distance. Right? And all of this is type safe. So concepts are nice. And there are a lot of concepts. For example, imagine a function. Calculate fine for speeding with return price, right? What's speed? Speed is a quantity of dimension speed. Quantity of is either quantity, uh, it, it, uh, t is a quantity, uh, d is the dimension of that we want to check. And we check if basically uh, quant the dimension of this, this one dimension is, is equivalent to dimension stored in this quantity. Quantity is a specialization of our class quantity. Dimension is either base dimension or derived dimension. Derived dimension is derived from specialization of our class. Base dimension is derived from specialization of our class as well. So those are all concepts. They are pretty nicely defined. We still miss a nice feature to, to make this uniform, to have only one type trait for, for, for those. Uh, we actually have a proposal for C23 for that called universal template parameter that we can match any kind in a, in a template definition because right now it's, it's, not, it's not possible. You cannot match easily, for example, something for vector and array because array has additional non type template parameter at the end. So you cannot say this is a class that has any type of parameters because you only, only can provide this is any type of any kind of type parameters or any kind of value parameters and you cannot mix much of those. So missing one feature in the language, hopefully we'll be able even to improve that in the future. Conversions. Conversions are similar to one that you know from Chrono. We have quantity cast, so something similar to dur duration cast, but actually it's on steroids thanks to concepts. Of course, you can provide entire quantity as a result. This is the case for Chrono. But thanks to concepts, we can say that we want only cast dimension and leave the rest intact. Or we can cast unit only Rest the, leave the rest intact, or change the representation only, and leave the rest intact, which is not the case in case of duration right now. And it's really easy to do with concepts. And fast, because concepts are fast to compile, much faster than what we had before. Using the thing that we voted yesterday, actually we can uh, actually, you can, actually not, not, we don't we not need to provide quantity cast here, we can just provide a construction, and what we voted yesterday, it can be even shorter for this first case. But for all others, you quantity cast is your friend. So I would like to just mention here that concepts is not just a syntactic sugar over the um, enable if void t or other template metaprogramming tricks. How would you constrain a return type from the function with Template meta programming with enable if. I don't think it's possible. How would you constrain a variable on the stack with template meta programming tricks? Right? So concepts are provide more use cases, better use cases for, for us. Also, constraining class template parameters is much, much easier with concepts than what we had before. Because before you had to provide primary template uh, um, definition with one additional helper parameter, and then provide specializations for cases that match, which basically confuses all your fellow guys in, 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 at work with such a design. Probably it will not pass code reviews. So benefits of using concepts. They clearly state the design intent, right? Uh, concept is embedded in the template signature, which, which means if you generate a documentation from the code, it, the information about the interface will be there. Simplify and extend Sfine. 
It's much easier to work than in a belief void T, much faster to compile, and we have additional use cases. And greatly, greatly improve error messages. Right? Compilation errors are better, shorter, provide more information. We never instanti basically instantiate our, um, our function that we want to, want to run. So you don't find yourself somewhere deeply nested in the implementation of the function with some error log that some, something couldn't compile. Okay. So now let's see how we can define a new, you've seen some definitions already, but I would like just to make it straight. Um, before C++20, this is the state of art, macros, to make a unit definition in nearly every project I know. Or you can separately provide five lines of, of different specializations if you don't want to use macros, because you have to provide structures, customization points, function to, print, to, to string, and so on. And then you basically provide things like that. And even more, right? to provide all of the information needed. C++20 opened us the doors to make it better. We can use ratio as a value. We can use identifier as a va value right away in the definition of our unit, which allowed us to basically skip macros because they were used for convenience. In one line of C++ code, you can define all of the information needed to declare a new unit. And then, then those are used as non template parameters. You can store them. And what's important here, you can work on them like on values. You don't have to instantiate class template ratio multiply, like it is the case with Chrono, which is strange and really slow to compile. We don't have to in basically instantiate the parameter stating uh, symbols add, because we are just using operators provided by those classes which makes the code easier to maintain, easier to write, and faster to compile. To convince you, this is the case. We have this exponent, long, exponent, long list of exponents of dimensions, right? That we've seen. For, for example, for speed, it's just two, but for some will be longer. And they want to multiply them. You want to multiply them in an old way, with ratio being a type. I basically have to do it iteratively with concept specializations. Switching to ratio that's a value, you can just write one function template to a third expression and multiply those. It's much easier to work with, much faster to define, much faster to compile. I would say that class type types as non template parameters opens us, opens up a door for many new use cases. It might be one of the most important improvements in template programming in the last decade. Wait, well, maybe besides concepts, of course. <laughs> right? But this is huge. We'll see many new use cases, I'm pretty sure about it, using this feature. So if something behaves like a value in your templates, probably it should be a value, not a type. Maybe make it a type and you'll find that it actually opens more doors than actually you expected. I didn't expect that I would be able to write full expression. It just happened when I refactored the code. Text output. Of course, we support streams, as you've seen for entire, for, for, for entire presentation here. We have, the streams are aware of, the stream support is aware of the units and uh, thanks to the, to the downcasting facility, even with such definition, we always provide correct result. But you also support to format. And we have some custom format specification that you can use, that you can actually tune to your needs. This is the official definition. I don't want you to, to go through it. There are some parts that are standard compliant, fill and align with units, sorry, units are ours, but those are standard spec. And uh, there are others also from the standard sign this precision, all of those are standard stuff with our additions to the format. Important one and interesting maybe the ASCII one, 
because why, by default we chose to use Unicode. This was what was suggested also by Unigroup group in Unicode group in ISO committee to be Unicode by default. But with a modifier, you can type uh, ASCII output if needed. For embedded domains, for printers, whatever, right? Also, as you've seen already, we actually work together in the ISA committee, right? We try to make our proposals to work with each other. So this library also works nicely with the linear Gibla proposal in order to create some vectors and matrices of values Then you can easily add them, multiply, and get results. And you can have two approaches. Either you may have vectors of quantities or quantities of vectors. Both directions are possible with this use case. So, the last chapter. Actually, we are moving faster than I expected with all of those slides. Environment compatibility next steps. This library is, is full of C20. This is why I cannot provide support to anything before 20. It will just not work. So, sorry for those that actually cannot use C20 compilers for now. I know what are the realities. I'm a consultant and an engineer, so I know how it works. But still, if you want to play with it, it's in Godboat. You can play with it in your own project, do some proof of concept. Maybe, actually, it will be a good case to show and to provide some short proof of concept. Go to your management and say, see, with this, we can, spend the, we can basically save a lot of errors, time, and basically and money. If we just move to C20, please. Right? So actually, it may be a good argument to upgrade your system if you are in this domain. But please provide us the feedback. Compilers. GC10, Clang 12, Visual Studio. All of the major compilers are supported, starting from GC10, so yeah, a year, year old compiler is enough. Some features, of course, will better work on, on 11, but those are sub officially supported right now. As I said, um, we are thinking about standardizing this one. It's not my ultimate goal. I will not cry if, if it doesn't basically go there. Well, maybe I will cry, but will not do anything worse to myself, right? Um, because it shouldn't be a point by itself. I basically care about this domain. Um, I would like to help me, others, and I would like to feel safer when I'm in Tesla sleeping, right? Sleeping in a car with the, the drive for, dr drives for me. I just want to make, in this case, my contribution to the community and, and, and make it a safer world. If it happens that the committee agrees that that's a good thing to be in the library, we are trying to basically do that. You already spent quite a lot of time and hours in the committee discussing this. It seems that people are interested, um, both in the committee and in the industry, to make it happen. We have really nice positive feedback so far, and yep, a few users, quite a few users that actually use it in the production already. C23 train is gone already. COVID times, hard times, we were not able to catch it. But 26 train arrives soon, and hopefully we'll start the process then. But in order to start anything, before I will write first paper, I need more feedback. I want to make sure that this is right. I don't want to be a person that in 20 years from now will be, will, will, will be spoken like this is the guy that put this piece of crap to the standard. Right? So I want to make sure that, that that's correct before I, I will even start the standardization process. This is not, as I said, this is not my ultimate goal to be in the standard. So, please try this one, right? Do a proof of concept. Maybe read the documentation, provide feedback, requirements, concerns if you have any. 
right? We want to be able to resolve them before we start the process. Because on GitHub, I can always release version 3.0 or 4.0 that will fix your problems. In standard, we are really bad in fixing our mistakes. If we standardize something, we cannot fix it in the future. Even if it's about ABI only. <laughs> I will not start discussion here, but we can discuss this later on. So fixing our mistakes in the committee is really hard. That's why sometimes even it's better to be in the library because then you can fix stuff easier. Right? So please experiment with this one. Also, GitHub issues are not only to complain about the problems with the library. If you're a happy user, please write an issue for me. We are using this in production. Thank you. Not, you don't have to provide anything more, right? Because actually, I don't know how many happy users I, I have. I know how many unhappy users I have, but I don't know the other part of the, of the story, right? I need some feedback to, to, to say to the committee, I know at least 100 companies that use it and are happy. Then it'll be much easier to standardize it. Um, please provide this on our, on our issues on GitHub. It's really active. We have both issues and discussions. Actually, it's probably an old screenshot. There's also a discussion section, a new feature on GitHub when we discuss stuff. It's a really active community. We'll, you'll probably get help in like 24 hours from us if you'll have any problems. So, so please um, provide your support, provide your issues, provide your feedback there. And also, I would just would like to, st to state that it's not my library that you should provide feedback. There are others, like, like Guy's library here and, and, and Bob's about the, the linear algebra and others, right? They're on the same, in the same train, on this, in, the same, in, in, in the same situation. If you want to standardize something as a part of the library, we need users, we need feedback. Don't wait for it until it will be in the standard, then I will use it in my project. It will be too late, right? If something is broken, we, we have to know it up front, not after the fact. We are doing our best to make it as good as possible, but we are just humans. We have our regular jobs. It's not our job to, to, to do it. We are doing it in our free time, right? Spending our custom resources, own resources, private resources. And yeah, we are just trying to make things better. But we need feedback, we need users in order to make sure that it's ready to be provided to everyone with a standard. And it's not just me. Um, it's not just my library, as I said, right? So I'd like to basically help everyone that actually in, was involved in standardizing those, the, those, those patterns in the community, because it's nothing new. We are doing physical use library for many years right now. So this is existing practice, right? We have Boost Units, Nick Holhouse has great library, Martin Mene, Jan Sende, and others. It's nothing new. It's, I, I didn't discover a new grant. I'm just taking from their learnings, from their experience, and trying to encapsulate it with having new tools in my hand. Because they started earlier, they didn't have those tools at that, at that time. We also have a lot of contributors. And in order actually to be a contributor, you don't have to actually code if you don't like. Being an active member, just providing discussions, feedback, answering questions, it's enough to contribute. If you're not feeling experienced enough, basically, to, to implement code, you don't have to. But you can help in other ways. Right? I also like to provide special thanks to, to Walter Brown, which was a committee member for a long time. Right now, he's re retired. He started to talk about this in, I don't see the date here, but it was 98, right? If, if I see correctly. He started to provide first paper then. Or is it 88? I don't see it on my screen. 88, right? 98. 98, yeah. So anyway, it was a long time ago when he started to provide first papers that we should think about it. Even though we didn't agree with Walter on many grounds, 
I really appreciate his, uh, his, his feedback and basically his efforts to make it standardized. Also, of course, Howard Hinnant for his Chroma library. It's inspiration for all of us, how to write correct modern code. And especially for me, because I'm doing something similar. And last but not least, all of the GCC developers that actually allowed me to make this library happen, providing like ConceptsTS in GCC 7 four years ago, when no one else cared about CS at that point. With that, I am done and ready for questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw first one then, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, so the question here is that, uh, what are the compile times? Because boost is known to basically slow down your compile times a lot, right? Um, I compared how uh, Sphenatrix and how um, basically concepts compare in compile times, but it was some syntactic text or test, of course. You cannot just refactor a huge project from boost to to this one and find out what's the improvement. I even don't have such a project to, to, to refactor. But in my opinion, and what I measured is that concepts basically are the linear progress and are a lot faster, and, and Sphena is, is a logarithmic one. And then, then this one, basically, that's why basically the compilers choke on, on, on Sphena and make it much slower. I expect this one to be much faster, uh, but I don't have any numbers yet. I would have to make an experiment, take some project, refactor it, measure, and then provide some results. But first, I have to find this project that will have uh, those um, yeah, boost units used there. I'd have time for it. Um, yeah, so how my tests work. Um, this is also a bit complicated stuff. I discussed this with, with Danny yesterday, actually, uh, that uh, our library is designed with modules in mind. So we would like to pre-compile whatever is possible, provide it as a module, and then you will just use it as a pre-compiled stuff. As we instantiate a lot of templates in order to provide you every single unit in, in SI system, if you will include an SI header with all of the definitions, you will suffer, especially in every translation you need, right? So for now, please just include what you need, like speed, time, di distance, not SI header. But with modules world, we expect that we'll be just pre-compiling an SI module and providing it to everyone. And it will be much faster than, to, than, than, than any headers right now. But as modules are still not there, it, at least this is my opinion, because CMake doesn't support it, uh, then I don't have any numbers and there are no modules yet. But as soon as CMake will start support them, we are going to provide modules. Yes, you had a question, I know. I, I, uh, I presume that uh, uh, comparison works. Uh, do comparison, for instance, let's say you have, uh, you're measuring things in millimeter, mm -hmm. and then you have a customer from a funny part of the world which uses inches. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the question is, can I compare inches to millimeters out of the box? And the answer is yes. That's, yeah, that's one of the most common use cases, right? The library is unit aware, and basically you can mix and match different units, and the library does the conversions for you in a safe way. That's it. Decibels. So the, yeah. So the question is regarding the logarithmic units, like decibels, right? Uh, that's a hard uh, question um, and a good question, actually. Um, but uh, we discussed this, and we think that this should be handled by logarithmic representation type rather than than, than a unit or library that's logarithmic um, aware. So for decibels, you should provide a representation type that basically is aware of logarithmic scale. So scale should be represented by, by, represent, by representation type provided for specific quantity. And with this, it will be supported. But we don't have such a representation type yet provided as a, for our users. So we have to find one that basically works on a logarithmic scale. Yeah, but that's a, that, that's a great concern. There are still some things that we have to work on. 
uh, and, but, but probably this one actually just requires a representation type. If you ask me about degrees and radians, the answer will be harder. So don't ask me, please. <laughs> but we are going to fix it after CPPCon. Oh, not fix it, provide the new feature support because we still are discussing this and didn't have time to address this properly. Problem is that basically uh, converting from radians to, uh, to to two degrees at compile time requires us to, to have pi at compile time somewhere. You can, of course, um, describe pi as ratio, as big ratio as possible, but then consider having pi squared or pi cubed and you right away overflow the ratio. So it's not a good solution. So we have to find some solution with the better solution. We know what it is. Unfortunately, it will impact the, those uh, um, expanded unknown uh, dimension errors because ratio will not be just a ratio. It will have to have some, some more logic. It will be a type list. But it's useful and needed. We cannot just have this without degrees and in the radius support. Are there any other, other questions? If not, then thank you. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, there is a question in, in the back. <laughs> yeah, so the, there, there is a comment that having a lot of angry users, it means that we have to use something right, because actually you have some users. <laughs> uh, but but uh, actually, we don't, actually, maybe we're not doing something right because we don't have that much of angry users. So either we're doing really good, or we don't have users at all. <laughs> so please try it. Please try it, provide feedback. And, and the, the more we have, the better we, we, we can ensure that we are not going to, to suffer in 10 years from now when it will be a part of, of standard. Thank you very much and see you later. Okay.